ability. Give me the strength to keep going. Throw your hands up if I'm preaching to you and say, God, help me to keep going. Help me to keep going. And if you're not going to take it away, because I do understand, understand this, people of God, even while you're fulfilling your purpose. I'm in a series of living your life on purpose on Wednesday nights. Y'all being blessed by it? But understand this. Even while you're fulfilling your purpose, there will be pressure. And understand that God's not going to take everything away. Because some things is your classroom. Some things you just have to go through so that he can reveal a side of you that you never, of him that he's never seen before, that you've never seen before. There's some things that God is trying to get to you. And the only way that he can get them to you is you got to go through some hard times and some hardships. And I don't know what it is in the body of Christ nowadays that everybody wants this quick magic stuff. You know, people say, Pastor Kim, just lay your hands on me so I can get your anointing. The devil is a lie. You know, just, you're so anointed. Just put your hands on me. I didn't threw, y'all know I didn't threw my handkerchief out there and people won't give it back because they say it's in her sweat. What kind of justice would it be for you to get my anointing in a flash that it took me a lifetime to get? What kind of justice would it be for you to get my anointing in 60 seconds that I had to crawl through the pits of hell, fight demons and fight devils to get to? The devil is a lie. Somebody throw your hands up and say, God, help me to keep going. Tell somebody and say, you're going through this for a reason. You're going through this for a reason. You're going through this for a reason. He goes back. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? He goes back. The Bible lets us know he goes back at least three times. This kills the philosophy that you're not supposed to keep going back to God asking him for the same thing. Now people say, if you really got faith, you don't keep going back and asking God. Well, Jesus did. He, he kept going back. See, people who say that they've never been in a tight place before. That they've never been in a place of pressure before. That you can just pray that one little cute prayer and walk away. But when you're really going through something and it feels like your back is pressed up against the wall, you keep going back and saying, Lord, it's me again. I don't have no new information. I don't have no new updates. It's the same issue. And I need you to fix me or fix this. I, I, I ain't got no new information. All I know is I need you to move in my life, move in my situation, move up in here. He goes back again at least three times the Bible lets us know. He goes back with the same thing. Father, if it be possible, let this cup take it away. If you don't take it away, at least give me the ability to keep going. At least just give me the strength to keep going. Touch your neighbor and say, keep going, keep going. Now, wait a minute. I know that we might not know how things are going to end. We might not know the ending result. But this is Jesus. <laughs> this is Jesus. Not only does he know how his story is going to end, he is the end. According to John the Revelator, he is the Alpha and the Omega. You remember John 1 and 1? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made. This is Jesus. Omniscient. I'm not meaning all science, meaning knowing. He knows everything. He knows everything. He knew how his story was going to end. He told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Sadducees things like this. He said, look, you destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up again. He said, just as Jonas was in the heart of the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three nights. He knew how his story was going to end. But yet, face to face with the process, face to face with pressure, he still had to wonder, can I take this? And I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care how much Bible you know. I don't know how much you talk in tongues. I don't care how much you go to choir rehearsal. I don't care if you're on the usher board, if you preach 10 times a week. There comes a time in your life uh, when you are under pressure that you have to say, I don't know if I can take this or not. I don't know if I'm built for this. I don't know if I can make it. Is there anybody in here that ever said, God, I love you. 
I believe in your promises. I'm quoting your word. I'm standing on your word. I know that you're God. And I know you brought me through that. And I know I was able to handle that. But if truth be told, this one right here feels like it's going to kill me. And I don't know. Am I preaching to anybody in here? And I don't know if I can handle this or not. But God told me to tell you this morning that you can handle it. Why can I handle it? Because he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Look, he says, Paul, Paul, come here, Paul. Talk to us for a minute. Paul said, I had an issue. I had an issue. And I went to God. And I said, God, I got this issue. And I need you to remove this issue. I need you to heal me of this thing. He said, I kept thrice, three times, repeatedly. I kept going back to God and saying, God, I need you to heal me of this. I need you to get this out the way. I believe I can serve you better if you just remove this. I believe I can be more effective if you just remove this. I believe I can do greater things if you just remove this hindrance. I believe, Lord God, that I'll be a better Christian if you just move this. I'll be a better preacher. I can serve you better. I can sing better. I can usher better if you just remove this. And he said, God said, My grace is sufficient for thee. I know why you ain't shouting, because you think grace is just unmerited favor. I used to think that too. Let me tell you something else that grace is. Grace is not only unmerited favor, but it's unmerited divine assistance. I ain't got nobody here. It's 9 o'clock. Y'all sleep. Y'all need some coffee. I need to preach this to some people that's really believing God for some unmerited divine assistance. I need some people that's believing God for some help to come their way. Help that they don't know of. Help that they haven't researched. Some help, some unmerited divine assistance. Time, find three people and say, help us on the way. Help us on the way. Help us on the way. Help, 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 help. Help, help, help. Help, help, help. Have you ever found yourself in a position and you couldn't say anything else but God, help. Help, help. Help, help. Have you found yourself waving the red flag of surrender saying, God, help. Do you see me? Help. He said, help is on the way. My grace is sufficient, which means that you have enough grace <laughs> to get through it. You have ample amount of grace. It's sufficient. It's not insufficient. You know about insufficient funds, don't you? When you and made a withdrawal, you know you didn't have enough. <laughs> Look at somebody say, you know you didn't have enough in there. You knew it before you wrote that check. Insufficient funds. God said, no, 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 that ain't, that ain't the type of grace you're dealing with here. You got more than enough. You got strength in areas that you haven't even tapped into yet. Oh, my God, who am I preaching to in here? That there's some things that you haven't even tapped into yet. It's things your eyes have not even seen, God says, that I have in store for you. There's, a, there's plenty enough grace for you to handle this situation. You have ample amount of grace. As a matter of fact, you got more than enough to handle what you got to go through. Quit whining and crying, talking about you can't take it and you can't make it. And see, I understand that when you're going through things, when, you, when you're dealing with that kind of pressure, because you got your own insecurities. You got your own, let me talk to you for a minute. You got your own flaws. You got your own errors, the ways in which you err. And don't nobody know you better than you. Come on, you might be Sister Jones at the church. But Sister Jones got some issues too. Oh yeah, you might be Brother Henry at the church, but Brother Henry got some issues at home. And see, that's the thing that the enemy uses against us. Because he knows that we know that we got some issues. You understand? But you need to tell the devil, even with my issues... God's grace. Are oh, you understanding what I'm saying? Tell somebody, it's his grace that's going to get me through this. It's his grace that's going to get me through it. 
to tell somebody else, oh, I feel God on that. It's his grace that's going to give. It ain't going to be my degree. It ain't going to be my house. It ain't going to be my bank account. It ain't going to be my car. It's going to be his grace that's going to get me through this. 